Life is a game. What? Nobody told you that? Wow, I'm glad to be the first. Everything you do can be viewed with drudgery or with fun. Let's learn how to get rid of the drudgery and turn life into a game. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Your Ultimate Life. Today's episode 609, and I titled today's episode, It's a Game. Now, you're not, if you're not watching the video, you're missing something because the background for today is a picture there of uh, the puppy, uh, not puppy, dog that is now over the Rainbow Bridge and gone. Her name was Popcorn. And we got her when she was uh, young. She was less than a year old, and she was a, a rescue puppy. Somebody was giving away uh, all of the litter of beagles. It's a beagle. She was a beagle basset mix and a beautiful dog. Long, silky, soft ears like Bassett, and and then her body looked like a beagle. She kind of looked like a giant beagle. But anyway, if you're listening to this, then you can, you can go find it on the on the YouTube channel if you want to see a picture of what she looked like. So today we're talking about uh, it's a game. It's a game, it's a game, it's a game. So what is it? Well, life. Life really is a game, and I put this picture of Popcorn, uh, our dog, our ex-dog, I guess, up because she was so much fun and enjoyed being mischievous and, and playing when she was younger, and she taught me a lot. And when she was younger, she used to just run a lot, and she would just run down the street. If she got away, uh, beagles are are known for that, being just rambunctious and full of energy and she would run, and Bassett's, of course, have an amazing sense of smell, and they would, she would get on a scent and just disappear. And it didn't matter how many times you called, she would just be gone, and sometimes she was really hard, hard to find. And she had a zest for life. And I remember when our other dog, Aiden, who's also gone now, Aiden and Popcorn, I'd take them out together for a walk, and I would get long leads, well, not too long, six or seven feet, and they would chase each other around and I would just stand in the middle and spin and spin. And, you know, I'd hold one just a little shorter than the other. So one was kind of like an inside track and an outside track. And they would chase each other around until they caught each other and then roll around. And you know how dogs play. And so it was gorgeous to watch and it was fun. And of course, spinning around, I would get dizzy and they would get tired, which of course was the point. Life is a game. And I don't mean a game in the sense of winning or losing. I mean a game in the sense of it's something you can do and enjoy. We weren't put here by our creator to have everything be awful. Now, you might disagree with me. You might think your life has been, had so much difficulty that I can't be right. And, or, you may, or you may think, oh, there's an, our other puppy upstairs Make a noise. That's okay. We'll just leave his exuberance in here. But anyway, one of the things to think about is life being a game doesn't mean that it is easy or it's fun all the time. It can be, it can be difficult and still be a game. Now think about this. When you look at sporting events like we're just a few days, when I record this, we're just a few days before the Super Bowl uh, in 2022. And I don't know when you're going to hear this, but we're just a few days a week, I think. it's. Uh, I think I'm recording this uh, the week before Super Bowl Sunday. But anyway, that game is a week from today, and that's a game, right? A football game. But there's a lot of serious people and a lot of work and a lot of preparation. We are right now in the middle of the Olympic Games and there's a lot of serious preparation in that, too. So games can be hard and games can be easy. Life can be hard and life can be easy, but it's still a game. And what I mean by that is you can learn to enjoy it no matter what is going on. Now, you might disagree, but I'm going to give you some examples from my own life. In the last four years, I've had a lot of intense challenges. I died in 2018. The end of 2018, I was back in the hospital for emergency surgery on my spinal cord and was paralyzed from the waist down. And, you know, there were some other things. A few uh, yes, a year before that, I had emergency, 
you know, gallbladder surgery where they were worried it was going to rupture and I was going to die. And those are three health challenges that I had in the space of 18 months that were all life-threatening. And one of them so much so that I actually did, you know, died, my heart stopped and all that jazz. If you want to read about any of those, they're written in my books, Meeting God at the Door and Walking Without Fear and that sort of stuff. But my point isn't to say poor Kellen, because I don't feel that way at all. And in fact, I made it a game. I chose to ask myself, what can I learn? What can I get from this experience? How can I grow here? So life is both hard and easy. That's true. And in fact, I heard someone say in a talk uh, that I heard it, I think it might've been at church or at, at a conference or something, <clears throat> that statistics show that more than 50% of people that you meet at any given moment have something very intense or difficult or hard going on in their life. Not trivial, but difficult, like a serious illness or serious financial thing, like more than half the people have got serious hard stuff going on. So how can that be a game? Well, let's look at it in the larger sense. My own experience has taught me that we're here to grow. We're not here to have an easy, easy time. And that even includes people that look like they have it easy. When I had more money than I knew what to do with, my life behind the scenes was a wreck. I struggled with depression and addictions and all kinds of other stuff. So the shape of the hardship changes. So I don't know what your hardship is today, but I want you to reframe it as a game. And the, the question is, are you willing to do the work to win the game? And the game is, how much can I grow? The game is, how can I take this experience, whatever it is for me, how can I take this experience and turn it into a growth opportunity? That's really the challenge for you, the chance for you, and for me every day. So during the times I had those terrible health challenges, the challenge was easy to see from the outside, and it was just as hard to navigate as financial challenges I've had earlier in my life, a time when I had declared bankruptcy and so forth many years ago, just as difficult as personal challenges I had with depression and other struggles in the years you know, before everything changed with that, at least in 2007. So the shape of my challenges has changed repeatedly, but they've all been hard. So here's what I ask you to think about. This whole podcast is about creating your ultimate life, a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. Joy can come today. I don't care what your challenge is. You can choose to have joy today. You're still breathing. You're alive. You, every day is a new opportunity. I have finally learned to view it that way. So I wake up every single morning and I choose, because I can, to express deep, slow, relaxed gratitude for the fact that I'm alive and breathing. I get another day. Every time I'm recording one of these episodes, I think about how grateful I am that I get to love you who are listening. I get to feel in my heart an appreciation and acknowledgement for all the good that you are doing. Even if you're struggling, the fact that you're still struggling and you're not giving up. Like we don't, the, the challenge doesn't end until we quit trying. I have a song where the chorus says, you only really die when you quit trying. That's the truth. So it's a game. The title of today's episode was not given to trivialize our challenges because many listening to this right now and many that aren't even listening that are just going along with life have serious, perhaps life-threatening, or other kinds of very serious challenges, so I'm not trivializing any of, that, any of that. But if we remember, as I finally learned, I have finally learned to do that this is on purpose. Now, sometimes we bring our challenges on ourselves with choices and with dumb things. I, I did that a lot, my own uh, you know, addictions and other things. I made choices that brought those on, and yeah, I suffered with depression for decades. 
yeah, I had some things happen to me that I talk about in some of the books that drove me to a place of believing I was not good enough. And so I did a lot of self-sabotage. But that doesn't change the fact that those things happened and I still had choice. I dealt with them poorly and I didn't learn at the time what I could have. But you know what? In the final analysis, I wouldn't change any of them. I'm on a lot of podcasts these days and I get asked a lot, so what would you do different? What would you change about your life? And the answer is nothing. I'm 66. I have fought and bled and worked and struggled as I'm sure you have. And I wouldn't change any of it because it has made me who I am today. So here's your invitation. The life around you today is like it is. You're as healthy as you are or as sick as you are. You're as wealthy as you are or as broke as you are. You're as happy as you are or as miserable as you are. Your choice is simple. Accept and love your life as it is right now. I don't mean leave it there, so don't hear that and don't raise your voice and say, hey, accept it and love it as it is right here, right now. And then lean into the opportunity for growth. Because if you have things about your life right now you don't like, no one can prevent you from changing them. Not a soul breathing air in the world. The only person that can keep you from winning the game of life, of growth, of opportunity, of creating your ultimate life by serving with your divine gifts is you. People in very difficult circumstances have chosen to lift and bless others. Told this story before, but Viktor Frankl talks about people in concentration camps. In the same situation, some lamenting and, you know, dying of sadness and misery and loneliness and poor me, and others choosing to walk around and lift and bless the spirits of those who were their fellow prisoners. What would drive someone, two people sitting there, one gets up and says, I'm going to go cheer other people up. And one of them sits and says, woe is me. What did I do to deserve this? What would drive that difference? Well, it's pure choice. Your choice is one of, if not the most precious gift you have. And that's why I say no one can prevent you from having your ultimate life. Nobody. I don't know how coronavirus has affected you. It certainly kept me locked up inside the walls, given my lungs and everything that happened to me, you know, in 2018. I'm a super high risk case. When I left the hospital there, they told me if I ever had a fever again, that was 911. So I've been scrupulous in making sure I stay healthy. So Corona has made me, you know, stay locked up. And even with that, not locked up, but, you know, be really careful about where I go, even with that. I've enjoyed this two years tremendously. I've written some books. I've been on a lot of podcasts. I've finished some more music. I've coached some wonderful people. I've learned to expand my sphere of love. I've learned to give more, be more, and offer more love and lift and blessing to everybody around me. Why? Because I chose to do that. So here's your challenge. Choose it. Choose it. What would prevent you from choosing to be grateful? for every single good thing in your life, your breath, every dollar that you have, you have a roof. Are you worried about where your next meal is coming from? Probably not. All of those things are so bounteous, so much to be grateful for. And so I challenge you to play the game of life all in. Lean in to every struggle, lean in to every challenge, lean in to every opportunity for growth, and then get outside yourself and lean in to the opportunity to love and bless those around you. Play this game. Here's a challenge I give my coaching clients, every one of them. I say, you know what your most important obligation is? in every conversation, your most important obligation is to leave whoever you talk to one step higher up the rung of the ladder of happiness. 
I don't care if you're complaining about the food or not happy with something, leave the person you interact with. No matter what the interaction is, one step up the ladder of happiness or the ladder of consciousness, More ste- one step up toward joy, happiness, creativity, love. Do that. I challenge you right here, right now, every interaction, leave the person you chat, chat with, talk to, one step up the ladder of happiness. I promise you, you'll feel better. Your life will seem lighter. Your load will seem lighter. And you will win at the game of life as you create your ultimate life. Now you know the secret of having things be a game. There's an, another piece to this that's really going to be important. You're going to want to jump right into the next video, which is slow down and have fun. Because so often we are hectic, frantic, and moving so quickly, we forget about the game. Slow down and have fun. Watch that video right now.